Good morning, Chairman. We're ready to begin. Okay, Denisha, thank you, and uh, welcome to everybody. Would you please call the roll of board members? Yes, Chairman. I'll begin with Norman Boyd. Here. Cynthia Rucker. Here. Roger Folsom. Here. David Cruz. Here. Anthony Williamson. Here. Nelva Lee. Here. Shane Mobley. Shane Mobley. You may just need to unmute yourself, Mr. Mobley. I do see that you're on. Tommy Hopkins. Tommy Hopkins. Robert Coles. Chairman, that concludes my roll call. Thank you, Denisha, and welcome to board members. And we do have a quorum. Shane is here. Sorry about that. Business. Um, and I will at this time call the meeting to order and recognize that we have a full agenda today, not as a long agenda as we had last month, but still quite, quite extensive. We have uh, several items to consider. We ask to be considered for the board for for votes, there are seven items. There are areas that we will be uh, voting on for final adoption and four for initial adoption. And we will have some update on uh, changes in uh, CON that will come at the, uh, the last part of the agenda. So let's move right into the uh, what's in front of us as an agenda. And first off is Asked uh, Dr. Rucker as our secretary if she's had a chance to review the minutes of the uh, previous board meeting, May 9, and can uh, uh, ask for approval of those minutes. Good morning, Chairman. I have reviewed the minutes from May 9, and I did find them to be in order. I do recommend they be approved as stands. Thank you, Dr. Rucker. Is there a second to that motion? Second, Ms. Hopkins. Dr. Hopkins has seconded that motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Hearing none, it is approved. Thank you very much, Dr. Rucker. And for the next item on the agenda, I will uh, turn it over to uh, uh, Commissioner Carlson for his report. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Members of the board, those of you joining us at home, um, as the chairman said, we do have a pretty full agenda today, so I'll, I'll be as brief as I can, but do want to point out, obviously the month of June, uh, is an important time for us, the year in scramble, uh, on, on, on so many fronts, um, and the implementation of so many pieces of legislation that goes into effect July 1, as, uh, Mr. Chairman said, we will be having a presentation to that effect at the end of the, uh, agenda today to, to walk everyone through some, some new process and procedures, uh, regarding, a, an important matter, um, on the policy and statutory side, um, there have been a lot of new policies that go into effect. So we'll be promulgating rules and, and regulations, um, along the way. So, uh, as you mentioned, chair was a full agenda last month. Uh, you can expect a few more in the months ahead as, as between year end and, and the uh, effective date of, of so many important policies approved by the legislature uh, this past session. Um, and again, Jesse Cox will be re representing uh, health planning at the end of the day, at the end of today's agenda, and to be walking through some new things there in the spirit of customer service and respect for the numerous stakeholders and, and, and customers, not to mention a good education session for those of us uh, interested in certificate of need and how important that is. And there'll be discussion going on um, throughout throughout the later uh, summer and fall. Um, also on the agenda day, among other items, are several updates uh, for the direct payment programs, DPPs that are up for final adoption. Represents a lot of work between the finance and reimbursement teams and a lot of our stakeholders out there, namely uh, the Georgia Hospital Association, whose expertise is always appreciated there. So a lot of dialogue with them, numerous other stakeholders um, to, to come up with policies that are equitable across the state 
um, and and make sense from a policy perspective that that work to uh, to 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 move our goals forward on behalf of the citizens. For the public's awareness, I know our SHBT SHBP team has asked. I make you aware that the evaluations for the Medicare Advantage procurement has concluded. It's now under some final legal review, and we expect a public announcement to be made at the end of this month. Again, that's the Medicare Advantage plans for um, for SHBP. So be on the lookout for some uh, public facing news to that effect in the in the weeks ahead. And on a related note, related note, the state's Medicaid managed care proposals continue to be thoroughly vetted and evaluated. I also want to thank Lynette Rhodes and Clois Bolar for their leadership on as big a thing as we do here at this department on behalf of the the, uh, the taxpayer and the citizenry. Um, thank you for all the subject matter experts and the countless hours both here and with our partners at DOAS as those thought provoking discussions continue throughout the summer and on into the fall and we'll keep you apprised on on movement there as I know that's something that, uh, that everyone's uh, paying close attention to and then Lastly, before I go into employee milestones, Mr. Chairman, uh, just a few weeks ago in this room, we celebrated uh, this year's class of our AL, gradu AL graduates, which is our um, Aspiring Leaders program. It was very festive. There were family members, uh, cake and balloons, a lot of pictures, a lot of personal testimony. Um, they Part of their uh, graduation was, was a packet that includes a lot of their background, not to mention a thoroughly uh, researched paper uh, complete with uh, conclusions and citations. So a very thought out process, challenging curriculum, I know, was presented by um, HR, um, as they always do such a, a great job of substantive curriculum alongside um, a little bit of fun, a little bit of positive energy, and um, yet another opportunity to learn more about the backgrounds of these unique, diverse, employees, uh, team members that make up this department. You had uh, veterans, uh, first member of their family to graduate college, just so on and so forth, um, years at other agencies, state, federal, local, such a diverse background that I know uh, we and hopefully the citizens uh, reap the benefits of those diverse backgrounds and experiences um, as it makes for a very unique team here to department community health and it's it's a joy to, to work alongside them every day and so on a related note mr chairman um i'll go into the employee milestones and i'll i'll be brief we do have some big numbers here though uh beginning with judy thompson 20 years at hfrd thank you so much our friend tara dickerson uh 15 years office of general counsel greg goggins i know him uh board of dentistry 10 years Christopher Harris at MAP, 10 years. Erica Jones with SHBP at 10 years. A series of five-year milestones. Candace Rose and all HR. Uh, Bobby Stone at the Board of Dentistry and Pharmacy. Balder Algier, HFRD. Amy Patel at uh, Board of Dentistry and Pharmacy. Michael Knight, Board of Dentistry and Pharmacy, again, five years. Bat Bradley Harper with IT, five years. Then celebrating a few one years, which are just as notable. Uh, Floretta Gaines at the Composite Medical Board, Young Kim, uh, excuse me, Young Kim, uh, the Financial Management, and then Terry Holly uh, at HFRD. Thank you for everyone's commitment to the team, uh, especially those big milestones. And with that, Mr. Chairman, we'll get on to the full agenda. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. Are there any questions, comments for the Commissioner from the board, please? Hearing none, we will move into the first agenda item that we'll be asked to consider for a vote on final adoption. And Lynette uh, Rhodes, Chief uh, Health Policy Officer, will make a presentation on the state plan amendment. Thank you, Chairman Boyd. Good morning, uh, Commissioner, Chairman, and members of the DCH Board. Uh, I am here seeking final adoption on a proposed change involving dental services for adult Medicaid members. Pending approval by the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services and the Department of Community Health's board, DCH proposes to modify its current state plan amendment to remove covered procedure limitations to individuals ages 21 and older. 
The removal of these procedure limitations will expand current dental coverage to adults in the Medicaid and Peach Care for Kids programs. The state plan amendment is consistent with budgetary instructions from the 2024 legislative session. The fiscal impact for state fiscal year 2025 uh, is as follows. Total cost is $31,090,893. Of that amount, $10,570,126 represents state cost. $20,520,767 represents federal cost. An opportunity for public comment was held on May the 14th of this year at 11.30 a.m. Written comments were due on or before May the 21st. We did not receive any oral or written comments. I will now pause for any questions from the board. Any questions for Lynette from the board, please? Hearing none, uh, is there a motion for uh, final adoption? Motion for approval, David Cruz. Ted, uh, uh, David Cruz has uh, made a motion for approval. Is there a second? Same, I believe second. The motion has been made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Hearing none, it is approved. Lynette, thank you very thank much. You. Next on the agenda on a uh, medical assistance plan amendment is Kim Morris, uh, Director of Reimbursement. Kim, you may proceed. Thank you. Good morning, Chairman Board, Boyd, members of the board and Commissioner Carlson. Today I'm presenting for final adoption pending Medicare and Medicaid services acceptance, a proposal to reimburse select primary care codes to 90% of the Medicare 2024 rate and select, select obstetric and gynecology codes to, to the 2024 Medicare rate effective July 1, 2024. Total cost is $37,334,767 with state funds of $12,693,821. The following primary care codes would be updated code 99213 code 99214, and the obstetrics and gynecology codes 59400, 59510, 59610, 59618. An opportunity for public comments was held on May 14, 2024 at 1230 p.m. and written comments were due on or before May 21st, 2024. The department received one public comment from Faye Fulton, Executive Vice President, Georgia Academy of Family and Physicians, and two written comments from Angela Highbar Battle, MD, President, Georgia Chapter, American Academy of Pediatricians, Samuel L. Church, MD, MPH, CP, CPC, FAAFP, President, Georgia Academy of Family Physicians. The commenters expressed concerns with the following paragraph in the public notice. Rates shown are for providers reimbursed at the par rate except Medicare assignments. Reimbursement rates for non-par providers do not accept Medicare assignments are slightly lower. The department has retracted this statement from the public notice. The second commenters expressed concerns with the department not using all funds appropriated by the General Assembly. The department has revised the public notice to list the total and state funds appropriated by the General Assembly. The public notice has been revised and will be posted to the website showing these changes. At this time, I'll pause for any questions from the board and ask the board to approve the proposal <clears throat> for final adoption. Questions, comments from the board, please. Hearing none. and. And as I understand, Kim, we have made some changes here from when we went through the initial adoption as a result of the public input. Is that correct? That is correct. Good, good. That shows the importance of the public input and uh, glad, to, glad to see our flexibility. 
Thank definitely, you. definitely. And uh, if there are no questions or comments further, is there a motion for approval for final adoption? Dr. Folsom, motion, motion for, for approval. approval. Roger Folson made the motion for final adoption. Is there a second? Hopkins second. Motion has been made for approval and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Hearing none, it is approved. Thank you very much. Okay. Emma, one, do you one. have one other item here and the next on the agenda for uh, plan amendment? Okay. Uh, secondly, for final adoption, and this is also pending Medicare and Medicaid services acceptance, a proposal to increase the reimbursement rates by 10% for select opt optometric codes. Uh, the Georgia Assembly through House Bill 916 appropriated total funds of $1,153,451 with state funds of $392,000. $172. The department will increase the CPT codes 92004 and 92014. An opportunity for public comments was held on May 15th, 2024 at 11.30 a.m. and written comments were due on or before May 22nd, 2024. The department did not receive any public or written comments. At this time, I'll pause for any questions and respect, respectfully ask for approval. Any questions, comments from the board, please? Hearing none, is there a motion for approval for final adoption? Dr. Lee, call for approval. Motion has been made for approval. Is there a second? Second, David Cruz. David Cruz has seconded that motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Hearing none, it is approved. Kim, thank you very much. Thank you. Next on the agenda, uh, Brian Lipton, Director of Strategic Finance, has I believe uh, four items for us to consider for final adoption. So you may proceed, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning, good member, and good morning to uh, other board members and commissioner. Um, my first item is advancing innovation to deliver equity, also known as aid, the revised eligibility for the state directed payment program. Pending CMS approval, the department proposes a revision to the eligibility criteria for the Georgia Aid State Directed Payment Program effective July 1st, 2024. Eligible hospitals would be defined as a hospital that is one, an, an individual acute care hospital providing more than 63,000 total Medicaid inpatient days based on the 2020 Medicare cost report and 100,000 total in-state Medicaid inpatient days as reported in the 2021 disproportionate share hospital final payment eligibility report or two, a non-state government owned hospital designated as both a sole community hospital and a teaching hospital on CMS form 255210 for cost report period ending 2022. The aid payments for all participants represents the difference between the aggregate provider commercial reimbursement and Medicaid payments using average commercial rates. The resulting percentage increase derived from these commercial rate equivalent Calculations will be applied to all eligible participating hospitals CMO claims to calculate the value-based direct payment amount. The cost impact in 2025 is 152 million in total funds, of which 100.4 million is federal funds and 51.6 million is state funds. The please note that the state share will be funded via intergovernmental transfer. An opportunity for public comment was held on May 15th, 2024 at 12.30 p.m. Written comments were due on or before May 22nd, 2024. No oral comments were received. One written comment was received from Kaylee Noggle, President and CEO of the Georgia Hospital Association. The following summary of comments was received. The comment was in full support of the proposed changes 
mentioning the DPP program's collective role in strengthening essential hospital services and adva advancing Georgia's healthcare workforce and commending the department for its continued efforts to enhance the programs. The department thanks President Nagel for her comments and support. With that, uh, Mr. Chair, I respectfully ask for the board's favorable consideration of this item for final adoption. I'm glad to take any questions. Questions or comments from the board, please. Hearing none, is there a motion for approval for final adoption? Motion for approval, Cynthia Rucker. Dr. Rutgers has made the motion for approval. Is there a second? Shane Mobley seconds. Shane Mobley has seconded that motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Hearing none, it is approved, Brian. Thank you very much. And you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next item is revised eligibility for strengthening the reinvestment of a necessary workforce in Georgia or strong state directed payment program. Pending CMS approval, the department proposes a revision to the eligibility criteria for strong effective July 1st, 2024. Eligible hospitals are currently defined as teaching hospitals with at least five full-time equivalents based on Schedule E, Part A, lines 10, 11, and 16 in the Medicare cost reports, excluding teaching hospitals participating in Georgia 8. These are known as Tier 1 strong hospitals. This change will create a two-tier structure, adding rural teaching hospitals with between 0 0.1 and 4.9 full-time equivalents, as reported on Schedule E, Part A, lines 10, 11, and 16, and the Medicare cost reports. The strong payments for tier two strong, oh, I'm sorry, apologies, those new hospitals will be known as tier two. The strong payments for tier two strong hospitals represents a 75% increase to the hospital Medicaid managed care base payments, which is less than the difference between 100% of commercial reimbursement and the Medicaid managed care base payments. There is no change to the 200% increase to hospital Medicaid managed care base payments for tier one strong hospitals. The projected 2025 cost impact for the tier two strong hospitals is 13.3 million in total funds, of which 8.8 .8 is federal funds and 4.5 million is state funds. The state share will be funded via intergovernmental transfer for public hospitals and provider payments for private hospitals. An opportunity for public comment was held on May 15th, 2024 at 2.30 p.m. Written comments were due on or before May 22nd, 2024. No oral comments were received. One written comment was received from Kaylee Noggle, President and CEO of the Georgia Hospital Association. The comment was again in full support of the proposed changes and the department thanks President Noggle and GHA for their continued support. With that, Mr. Chairman, I respectfully ask for the board's favorable consideration of this item for final adoption and we'll pause for any questions. Any questions, comments uh, from the board, please? Hearing none, is there a motion for approval for final adoption? Folsom motion for approval, Mr. Chairman. Roger Folsom made the motion for final adoption. Is there a second? Second, David Cruz. David Cruz has seconded that motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? It is approved, Brian. Thank you very much. You may move to your next item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next item is rate increases for Medicaid Medicare Management Organization hospital-directed payments for public hospitals. Pending CMS approval, the department proposes increase in reimbursement for the hospital state-directed payment program for eligible public hospitals effective July 1st, 2024. Eligible, eligible public hospitals are defined as all state and non-state government hospitals, excluding critical access hospitals. The program currently provides for the aggregate difference between Medicare reimbursement and Medicaid managed care base payments. DCH proposes an additional 10% increase on Medicaid managed care base payments 
for those eligible hospitals in pool two of the disproportionate share hospital program. The projected cost impact of this change is $29.7 million in total funds, of which $19.6 million is federal funds and $10.1 million is state funds. The state share will be funded via intergovernmental transfer. An opportunity for public comment was held on May 16th, 2024 at 11.30 a.m. Written comments were due on or before May 23rd, 2024. No oral comments were received. There was one written comment from Kaylee Noggle, president and CEO of the Georgia Hospital Association. The comment was in full support of the proposed changes. The department thanks President Noggle and GHA for their continued support. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I will again ask for the board's favorable consideration of this item for final adoption. I will pause for any questions. Thank you, Brian. Are there any questions, comments from the board, please? Hearing none, is there a motion for approval for final adoption? Absolutely motions for final approval. Motion has been made uh, the Dr. Rucker for uh, a final adoption. Is there a second? Hopkins second. There's motion has been made for final adoption and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Hearing none, it is approved. Brian, you may move to your final item. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This last item is the same change as the previous, just for private hospitals, and I'll now run through the description. Pending CMS approval, the department proposes an increase in reimbursement for the hospital state-directed payment program for eligible private hospitals, effective July 1st, 2024. Eligible private hospitals are defined as all private acute hospitals, excluding general cancer hospitals, freestanding children's hospitals, rehab, psychiatric, and long-term acute hospitals, and rural emergency hospitals. All critical access hospitals are also excluded. The program currently provides for an aggregate difference between the Medicare uh, reimbursement and Medicaid managed care based payments. DCH proposes an additional 10% increase on the managed, Medicaid managed care base payments for those eligible hospitals in pool two of the disproportionate share hospital program. The projected cost impact is $17.9 million in total funds, of which $11.9 million is federal funds and 6.1 is state funds. The state share will be funded via provider payments. An opportunity for public comment was held on May 16th, 2024 at 12.30 p.m. Written comments were due on or before May 23rd, 2024. No oral comments were received. One written comment was received from Kaylee Noggle, President and CEO of the Georgia Hospital Association. The comment was in full support of the proposed changes. The department thanks President Noggle and GHA for their support. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I will respectfully ask for the board's favorable consideration of this item for final adoption and happy to take any questions. Questions, comments from the board, please. Hearing none, is there a, a motion for approval for final adoption? So moved, Hopkins. You know, Dr. Hopkins has made the motion for approval for final adoption. Is there a second? Wholesome second. Roger Folsom has seconded that motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Hearing none, it is approved, Brian. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next items we are being asked for considered for vote will be for initial adoption. And as a reminder of our process, uh, initial adoptions are um, followed by public comment and then brought back for final adoption after any changes are made. So we're going to be looking at initial adoptions and Kim Morris, Director of Reimbursement, will make a presentation of the first item. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, presenting for initial adoption pending Medicare and Medicaid services acceptance, a proposal to increase select reimbursement rates for speech language pathology, audiology, physical therapy, and occupational therapy to 85% of the 2023 Medicare Part B fee schedule. 
For fiscal year 2025, the General Assembly, through House Bill 916, appropriated total funds of $14,281,948, state funds of $4,855,862. There are 77 CPT codes that will be updated. Instead of reading all the CPT codes, I will refer, refer the board to the board documents, and these codes will also be listed in the public notice. The department will not adjust the reimbursement rates for CPT codes not priced by Medicare or reduce the reimbursement rates in those instances wherein application of the 2023 Medicare rate would result in a reimbursement rate reduction. So anything that's not Medicare or would be reduced, we're not changing those rates. Okay. An opportunity for public comments will be held on June 18th, 2024 at 10 a.m. via audio, Zoom audio. Written comments are due on or before June 25th, 2024. At this time, I'll pause for any questions from the board and ask the board to approve the proposal for initial adoption. Any questions, comments? For Kim, please. Hearing none, is there a motion for approval for initial adoption? Motion for approval, David Cruz. David Cruz made the motion for approval. Is there a second? Second, Cynthia Rucker. Dr. Rucker's had second to that motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining, hearing none, it is approved for initial adoption. All right, thank, thank you. Kim, thank you. Lynette Rhodes is next on the agenda with an initial adoption consideration. So Lynette, you may uh, proceed. Thank you, Chairman Boyd. Pending approval from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services and the DCH board, the department is proposing to amend its state plan to include a new qualified residential treatment program, also commonly referred to as QRTPs. The qualified residential treatment program will be a new designation of placement created by the Family First Prevention Services Act. This change will be effective July 1st of 2024. A QRTP, as, as background, a QRTP is a program that has a trauma-informed treatment model, is designed to address the needs of children, including clinical needs as appropriate, and again is for children with serious emotional or behavioral health disorders or disturbances, and meets all other requirements outlined in the Act. Title IV-E funding is available if the child's placement is more than two weeks and is in a congregate care setting. The criteria for the QRTPs or the QRTP programs include the following. The facility must be licensed in the state of Georgia and accredited. Again, it must use a trauma-informed treatment model. It the program must facilitate participation of the family in the child's treatment program and document family involvement and outreach, as well as how sibling connections are maintained. The program must provide discharge planning and family-based aftercare for at least six months post-discharge. And the program and facility must have registered or licensed nursing staff and other licensed clinical, clinical staff on site and available 24 seven. DCH in collaboration with the Department of Human Services developed a staffing model consisting of four employee types to manage and provide adequate care within the QRTP. The staffing types are identified and outlined within the public notice and include social workers, behavioral health aides, behavioral health clinicians, and registered nurses. The funding sources for each of the various staffing types are again outlined 
in the public notice. The QRTP rate was developed for state fiscal year 2025 using data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, salary tables, child caring institution historical expense reports, and the Bureau of Labor Statistics Employment Cost Index over time. The rates are outlined within the public notice document, but I will do a quick overview for the board. For state fiscal year 25, the fiscal impact is as follows. And this is broken out uh, board members by agency, because again, this is a collaborative initiative between both the Department of Community Health and the Department of Human Services Division of Family and Children's Services. As it relates to DFACs, the per diem rate for room and board for QRTPs for state fiscal year 25 is $141.36. The fiscal impact of this per diem rate for the Department of Family and Children's Services is $5,159,640. That represents total funds. Of that amount, when broken out, $3,954,437 is state funds. The remaining $1,205,203,000 represents federal funds. So again, that specific amount is applicable to the Department of uh, Family and Children's Services and is outlined in the public notice. As it relates to the fiscal impact for the Department of Community Health for state fiscal year 25, the per diem rate for the service cost is $472.21. The fiscal impact of this amount is $17,235,665. When broken out, state funds represents $5,000,000 $859,695, and the federal funds portion is $11,375,970. An opportunity for public comment will be held on June the 18th at 1130 a.m. via Zoom. Written comments are due on or before June the 25th, 2024. I will pause now, Chairman Boyd, for any questions from the board. Thank you, Lynette. Are there questions, comments from the board, please? Hearing none, is there a, a motion for approval for initial adoption? So moved, Hopkins. Motion has been made for approval for final adoption. Is there a second? Folsom second. Roger Folsom has seconded that. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? It is approved for initial adoption. Thank you very much. Thank Lynette. you. Thank you. Next, Peter uh, D'Alba will uh, make two presentations on uh, medical assistance plans and uh, this is pharmacy services. Good morning. And Peter, I believe this is your first time before the board of the presentation. Indeed it is. So, uh, welcome. Thank you uh, very much. Mr. Chairman, across the street at the Capitol, as Senator Dr. Burke will recall, I, there's usually a good bit of heckling involved with the first presentation. <laughs> so uh, I'll leave it to the board members, but, uh, but you know, give, give it your best shot out there. I think we're fairly peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very Go much. Go ahead, please. Well, good morning. Pending CMS approval of our state plan, DCH proposes for initial adoption and increase. You might want to raise the volume of the voice a little bit. I have sure. a little bit of I'll time here. Go ahead, please. Pending CMS approval of our state plan, DCH proposes for initial adoption and increase in the professional dispensing fee to $11.50 for independent pharmacies with a prescription claim volume of 65,000 claims per year. The total cost for this program 
for this increase is nine hundred and twenty six thousand seven hundred and twenty four thousand with state funds representing $315,064 and federal funds of $611,664. An opportunity for public comment will be held on June 20th at 11 a.m. with written comments due on or before June 27th. We'll pause now for any questions from the board. Any questions or comments from the board, please? Hearing none, is there a motion for approval for initial adoption? Same motion. Motion for approval. Motion has been made for initial adoption approval. Is there a second? Second, David Cruz. David Cruz has seconded that motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Hearing none, it is approved. Peter, you may proceed to your second item. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> second one is for the hospital add-on payment for long-acting injectable atypical antipsychotics. Pending CMS approval of our state plan, DCH proposes for initial adoption to allow for an add-on payment to inpatient claims for certain long-acting injectable antipsychotic drugs. The total funds for this add-on payment is $7,969,000 with state funds representing $2,709,288 with federal funds of $5,259,792. An opportunity for public comment will be held on June 24th with written comments due by June 28th. We'll pause now for any questions or comments. Any questions or comments for Peter, please? Hearing none, is there a motion for approval for initial adoption? Shane Momley motions for approval. Shane Momley has made the motion for approval. Is there a second? Folsom second. Roger Folsom has seconded that. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Abstaining? Hearing none, it is approved. Peter, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We've gone through several items here today for and and approved, and uh, I'm struck again with uh, the uh, enormity of the amount of money that is being expended in our state for various programs to fulfill our obligations as as a state as a department to have a healthy uh, Georgia. And I think the compliments goes to our elected officials and, and the department of budgeting uh, for these kinds of things that we have and pass over today. And I thank the department for providing information and the work that goes in in the background, even though we ran through these fairly quickly, we all had an opportunity to review these and did review uh, prior, to, uh, prior to the meeting and thank the department for providing that information. With that, our uh, uh, information item for the uh, uh, inclusion of the uh, uh, agenda today is uh, in the subject of certificate need and Jesse Cox, legal services officer, will make that presentation. Thank Jesse, you. please. Uh, good morning, Chairman Boyd, uh, Commissioner Carlson, members of the board. Uh, I'm Jesse Cox. Uh, I'll, on behalf of Carisha Lang, the interim executive director of the Office of Health Planning, uh, I'll provide an update on the Certificate of Need program. Uh, as you know, HB 1339, which revised the revised the Certificate of Need. Yeah, I think we need a little up in the volume of the voice. I'm Sorry. having a little hard time following. That's better? Go ahead, please. Okay. Um, as you know, HB 1339, which revises the certificate of need process and adds several new exemptions, was signed by Governor Kemp on April 19th, 2024. Uh, HB 1339 implements several broad changes to the certific certificate of need program. Uh, the bill directs the department to review and update the state health plan at least every five years, beginning January 1st, 2025. As a part of uh, the department's review and update of the state health plan every five years, uh, the department must consider the relevance of the numerical need methodologies currently in place and review the overall requirements associated with developing services under the CON program. Uh, we will also identify and address health issues 
uh, and reevaluate and recommend goals, objectives, and system changes to achieve official state health policies for every population across the state. Uh, we will solicit active participation from various stakeholders, such as healthcare providers, uh, consumers, advocates, representatives of state agencies, and elected officials uh, for input about future direction of delivering healthcare services in Georgia and how DCH can be a partner in this effort through compatible health planning initiatives. Uh, the overall goal is, of course, to be responsive to the changing healthcare needs of Georgians. Uh, the department will also work with the Office of Legislative Counsel to review the CON, uh, review COID code sections and make recommendations to streamline uh, the process for CONs and letter of determination requests. Uh, the bill creates a comprehensive health care coverage commission uh, to advise on improving access to health care for low income and insured, uninsured populations. Um, HB 1339 adds additional exemptions to CON requirements, um, such as psychiatric and substance abuse disorder uh, inpatient beds, um, perinatal services in rural counties, birthing centers, acute care hospitals in rural counties, and more. Um, a CON will no longer be required um, for capital expenditures or for the acquisition of diagnostic imaging equipment um, for existing services. Um, the bill also modifies the CON process in several, way, several ways, including reduced timelines, and it removes the commissioner level review of um, CON contested, contested decisions. Uh, finally, the rural hospital tax credit cap uh, was raised to $100 million a year, and the sunset of the program is extended to December 31st, 2029. Um, beginning on July 1st, 2024, the Office of Health Planning will accept requests for letters of determination, commonly known as VDTs, uh, for the new exemptions. A DET is used to confirm whether an activity is exempt from prior CON review and approval. Um, a request for a letter of determination must also be submitted for any activity which is believed to no longer be subject to the review process prior to its implementation. Uh, updated DET request forms and updated CON application forms will be available uh, on our website for use on July 1st, 2024 and moving forward. Um, the process for requesting exe an exemption will continue to be straightforward and uh, a streamlined process. Um, interested parties should download and complete the updated forms um, based on the activity being proposed. We have three different forms for various types of activities. Um, the applicant should describe the project, indicate which specific exemption is being requested, and the completed form should be uploaded via our online portal. Um, we generally issue responses within 60 days to confirm exemptions from the CON requirements. Um, and we currently are in the process of developing new rules for implementing HB 1339. Uh, we're looking forward to working with the board and engaging our stakeholders for feedback as we move forward in that process. Um, finally, uh, our email address for general inquiries and requests for technical assistance may be sent to ohp.help at dch.ga.gov. Um, thank you, and are there any questions? Any questions, comments from the board, please? Commissioner, did you have a comment? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you, uh, thank you, Jesse, for, for, for doing this, and Carisha and the whole team. So we knew, it, obviously, this was a, a, a debated issue, and, and so we had an internal goal of, of, you know, no reason to be called flat-footed, and I really want to thank health planning and a lot of the people in this room for um, staying current on the on the debate. So when they did sign it on, when there was signing the law, as you pointed out, we were able to quickly pivot. So thanks to, to you and, and Carisha and, and everyone's respective teams, we do have, um, just for the public, we do have several new resources available on the website. Um, a general principle is, is please check some of those resources, uh, rewatch your presentation just now, whatever um, our stakeholders need to do to kind of understand um, what's available, follow those. But obviously, as you mentioned, technical assistance, you guys do a great job uh, working with, with our partners on uh, answering their questions. So we're still available to help just with all the change. We're trying to direct traffic to, to these new resources for a moment, knowing that we're still available to help. Uh, and we'll continue the education process throughout the summer and fall, whether it's uh, groups with with webinars or utilizing this space, the committee slot before the board meetings, things like that to continue educate. Because you're right, there's a lot that's that's new. So uh, thank you for for taking the time to to prepare all this. No problem. Thank you. Thank you.
Does anyone uh, know of any new business uh, needs to come before the board at this time? I think Commissioner, you uh, and Denisha have told me that it's possible with here coming up to year end, there's some other items that we may need to address as a board prior to the end of this month. And we may be asking for uh, some times, Denisha will, uh, that we would be available for a, for a special phone call uh, meeting that may happen over the next couple of weeks. Is that true? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair, okay. uh, that, that is. We, we again, you, you, you were spot on that they're related to the, to the year end posture that we're in with June 30th before us. Um, a few things that need further calculation, further dialogue with CMS. Um, but, but we do appreciate the board, especially given summer schedules, everyone's uh, open mind, this fair uh, flexibility. Um, Denisha will be reaching out to you um, in the very near future to establish the, the, the date and time. And as you point out, our materials that we uh, prepare for the public are very thorough and we, we, we continue to, to, to honor that. So we'll have materials out to the public in a timely fashion. Um, and we'll have a, everything will be in order. So when we do have this call meeting, we, we would like to think that it should be a pretty, pretty brief and, and efficient. Unless you would like him to come back and read all 71 of those codes for everyone <laughs> and walk through all that. She said she's glad to do it in, in the sake of a uh, customer sure service. She is. All right. Well, if there's no other uh, comments or business needs to come before the board at this time, we will stand adjourned. Our next meeting here is July 11 at, uh, at 1030. And uh, look forward to Father's Day this weekend and Flag Day tomorrow. So. Right. We're adjourned. Thank you very much to the board Happy members Father's and the public for attending this morning. Thank you. Thank you.